name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I recall how chilly it was that early morning in June several years ago. It was a dark, overcast sky that threatened to be a downpour any time. It was a perfect day for a funeral. I was a guest of the Bishop of the Diocese of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, and several of us were packed in a Land Rover as we set out to a remote village to attend a funeral. We traveled several miles toward the base of the mountain, zigzagging on a bumpy dirt road that gave a whole new meaning to potholes. When we went as far as we could by car, we got out and we walked up this narrow pathway through heavily foliaged foothills. As we snaked our way up the steep mountainside, every 50 yards or so, a handful of people from tiny infants to those stooped over with age would appear from a side trail and quietly merge into our human train, one by one. I was struck by their reverence and their quiet dignity. They made a few nonverbal communications to assist others up the mountainside. The women wore vibrant, colorful dresses with matching, elaborate headdresses. And the men had on clean white shirts, many with frayed cuffs, some with ties and dress pants. Shoes were optional. Considering the steep and muddy narrow footpath, I'd considered tossing mine aside several times. It was quite obvious that each guest had taken great pains to wear their Sunday best to the funeral. After hiking for about an hour, we finally arrived at the home of the elderly woman who had died. The area surrounding her tiny cinder block house was full of activity as the guests gathered into small groups to visit and catch up. Several women were cooking in the outdoor kitchen, stirring huge pots besides barrels of home brew covered with these large green banana tree leaves to keep the flies at bay. Inside, the mourners slowly filed past, the body lying in state in the main room of the home. All quietly gave their condolences to the family member seated nearby. In this part of Africa, all from the surrounding villages are invited and expected to attend the funeral of a member of their community. This reflects their deep connection they feel to each other. By their presence, they honor God, God and each other as they stand together in their finery, rich and poor alike. As a community, together they embody the African proverb, because we are, I am. Because we are, I am. Our relationships define who we are. I think this is Jesus' message in today's reading from John's Gospel. He says, abide in me as I abide in you. Abiding is about connecting, is about being present to one another. Abiding is enduring and remaining in relationship with each other and with God, no matter how trying or messy it can get. As a contemporary translation, it says it best. Live in me. Make your home in me, just as I do in you. Even though we are through with Easter Sunday and it's come and gone, we circle back to Jesus' one of his last discourses that he gave to his disciples on the evening of Monday Thursday. I know this seems confusing and makes me wonder what the folks were thinking who lined up the liturgy, the lectionary, at this time. But however, with the experience of Jesus' death and resurrection so fresh on our minds, we now know why Jesus is so intent for his inner circle of friends to understand the need to stay connected to one another and not to fall away after he is gone 
and when things get really tough. Jesus knows that only by being in relationship with each other and with God will they be able to go and do the work he has given them to do after he is gone. They are his hope to keep the message of Easter alive. To make his point, Jesus uses this image of vines and branches. Anyone who does any kind of gardening knows the importance of pruning and to keep a plant healthy and thriving. A branch that is left untended becomes wild and lanky and is susceptible to disease. It produces nothing and is pretty much good for nothing. However, a branch that is nurtured and pruned receives the nutrients it needs from the vine to flourish and produce abundant fruit. Over the last couple of months, I've had the honor to watch many of our parish volunteer gardeners spend hours on their knees pruning these rose bushes that gracefully welcome us to church. They cut off the dead woody branches because they promise no new life and prune leggy branches to make way for new branches that will sprout from the base of the bush and produce gorgeous roses for the spring and summer. And so it is with us. At times, we must let go of those things that stunt our growth. Be it anger, fear, disappointment, anxiety, or maybe sheer inertia from enduring this ongoing pandemic. We need God's love and each of us to help us, each other, to let go of all that stuff that gets in the way of us growing into that unique person God has created us to be. If the pandemic has taught us anything, is that we need community. We need one another. Without it, we die. We are cut off from the one source of life and we wither on the vine. We become isolated and lost. Hope is replaced by despair, robbing us of having any sense of purpose in our lives. So Jesus invites us to make our home in him as his disciples today. And we do this by following his commandments, doing what Jesus said and did to love God and our neighbor. This means we open our hearts and we dare to risk being truly present to one another and all those we encounter in our daily lives. And the really good news is that when we do, we find that God loves us just as we are, with all our hurts, our successes, our sins, our dreams, and our brokenness. When we begin to believe this, we cannot help but help reach out because we are see ourselves in one another. And that is the wellspring of compassion, empathy, and love. It's about being and staying connected on a deep, substantive level, no matter where life finds us. Be it here in Corona Del Mar, at the church this morning, those who are watching on Zoom, or even to the moon and back. Almost 50 years ago, two young astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong made history by walking on the moon. We just had four astronauts return from the International Space Station yesterday. So going back 52 years, after the lunar module landed on the moon's surface, Aldrin radioed to NASA to request a moment of silence to mark this incredible event. What followed Few knew because the press did not report on it. Over 260,000 miles from Earth, Aldrin took out a small communion kit that had been blessed by his pastor in his church in Texas. He says, In the radio blackout, I opened those little plastic pack packages which contained the bread and the wine. I poured the wine into the chalice our church had given me. In the one-sixth gravity of the moon, 
the wine slowly curled and gracefully came up the side of the cup. Then I read the scripture, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me will bring forth much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Life is about connections. Jesus says, live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. When we do, we become more of that real, true person God intends for us to be. Because we are, I am. Amen.